Hey everyone, it's Yue from the Strictly Broken YouTube channel, and today I'm deck profiling the Bar Choice Alcization Volume 2 deck profile, the other uh, Alcization Volume 2 deck that came out of the set, uh, the other Flucklight deck, I should say. Uh, the other one is the Six Pants 2 Stock Soul deck that I've probably already profiled on the channel. That one is my favorite. This one is, I definitely like it a little bit less. It's still really, really good. The Finisher in this deck is, I can probably pretty comfortably say without having to do math, it's probably the best finisher in the game. Uh, there's not a lot of finishers that do as many pings as this one. Straight up, like the instance of damage this deck can do is so insane. The finisher, you can actually, you know, if you have a semi decent game, you can plan deck state to basically become like one of the most broken finishers ever. Um, that they ever printed. There are some finishers that obviously can do more broken things like Triple Kaleidoscope Ilya or um, uh, a Summer Pockets finisher that you know that you do you know four one 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 like four ones on all three lanes but I digress the finisher I can comfortably say like I'm pretty sure this is like the most broken finisher in terms of like damage output that is also just very consistent to do. Uh, so yeah bar choice this deck is basically unbuildable in English, unfortunately, there's too many 10th anniversary cards that are core to the deck that you must play. So sadly, this deck list does not port over to English particularly well. Uh, you're probably going to have to play a different kind of build in English, maybe a level one Kirito combo into choice finisher, or you play the six pants two stock soul list that I profi profiled already. Anyways, I digress. If you play JP, it doesn't matter. This deck is uh, the way it is in JP. And uh, yeah, uh, let's just get straight into it. Starting off four copies of this uh on reverse go to memory salvage ricky it's 500 power it's 500 power being very very shitty honestly uh there are a lot of cards that snipe 500 power cards so uh you usually have to you have to give opponent a plus to send this to memory this is the required condition to do your broken finisher if it's uh, if you're, this card's not in your memory you can't even do your finisher so must play four of must draw it must use it early game uh, also the other ability is that on attack you can pump another one of your characters 1k times the amount of soul that character has. So very good power pump that scales throughout the game uh, and makes this card not completely useless even after level 0 when, when Rikis, specifically on reverse Rikis, tend to become completely useless. Anyway, it's just a generic salvage Ricky that is also the condition to do your broken finisher. So whoa, I'm going to try to angle this perfectly. Yeah, four copies of it because you want to draw it early. Next up, two more of this Ricky. So this Ricky is on reverse. You send this to clock, pay one, send this to clock, check top five, add a character from among, from among them to your hand and send the rest to the waiting room. Uh, you play this because the deck is actually pretty bad at milling uh, in first deck. And you, this is a normal kind of deck with a normal play pattern. So you do want to hit second deck before, um, second deck before level two, the bread and butter of you know, good way choice plays to hit second deck before level two. Uh, this card helps with that because it mills five. Yeah, I just really wanted a card that can mill as many cards as possible. This one does five. Pretty helpful to get to second deck before level two. Uh, just two copies because I, I, I've considered playing three. Honestly, I might actually up it to three. Uh, two for now because drawing like too many of these damage enabling cards that don't actually go stock positive is a little bit... Uh, painful sometimes. Anyways, two copies of this drop salvage. Pumps 1k when you do the drop salvage and you know on play mill two, you know more mill hitting second deck, very important. Uh, if you hit a climax among the cards milled, uh, this card can side without penalty, uh, pretty whatever effect. It's just for the, the cards are there for the mill. And uh, yeah, drop salvaging is fine. Hand fixing is fine. Uh, card is so-so. Uh, it, it's just a utility card that has a little bit of mill attached to it. So I decided to play two copies of it. One copy of the 10th anniversary spammable salvage brainstorm. This card's pretty good. Honestly, uh, 500 assist is good because it turns off your opponent's ability to snipe these cards with minus 500 cards. And uh, it's a spammable salvage brainstorm. So you, if you want to, if you had two stock available in first deck, you can you know, go through your deck and hit second deck. Pretty important. Uh, next up, I got two copies of this Kirito. Uh, so this is a uh, alization set one card. Its on play effect is to check top two cards of your deck and rearrange them. And on opponent's turn, when they play climax, you can send this to stock. This card is actually pretty good. Uh, triggering climax on first battle in 
a deck like this really sucks. So if you can have access to this card at level zero, uh, you can just kind of rearrange your deck in a way where at least you know for sure you're not triggering a climax in first battle. If you see two climaxes, just brainstorm plus two, take the plus two and run with it. Uh, but yeah, the, drawing this card is actually really good. It's a it's a really good card to draw into. Uh, but is a uh, and even throughout like the mid game, if you ever win field in one lane, uh, you can field this card in that lane that you want field for, and on opponent's turn you're gonna cash in for an extra stock. So uh, really really good card, honestly, really really good. Uh, and then one copy of this card. It's another 10th anniversary card. It's a Climax Swapper, level zero Climax Swapper, so the color doesn't matter in comparison to the level one Climax Swapper that is available in Alicization Volume 2, but that one's blue. This deck doesn't play blue uh, uh, consistently enough to have it for a one zero card. Uh, the other ability is basically, it's less dead than you think. So if you have two other 10th anniversary characters on your field, you can draw a ditch when this card is placed. And it's less dead than you think because you actually have a decent amount of 10th anniversary cards that are actually core to your game plan enough that they are probably going to be on your field at level one. Uh, so uh, it, the effect actually can come up, but it's mainly there for the climax swap, you know, just to consistently make sure you can do your finisher combo that is broken that you win a lot of games off of. Uh, next up, three copies of Salvage Brainstorm. This is a new one from the new set. Uh, tap self, salvage brainstorm, 500 center. It's not the best brainstorm effect, but you know, tap self, salvage. It's pretty good. It's what you're looking for. Two copies of this, another 10th anniversary card. It is core to the deck. Uh, this card, so it has tap, tap self to give a character the ability to, on reverse, uh, put that character that it reversed to clock and the car, uh, top card of your opponent's clock to waiting room. Uh, and when you use Act Pump 1K. So this card is, this deck is a very Act-centric deck. It has cards that enable, uh, cards that have Act-enabling abilities, uh, and they're all from 10th Anniversary, by the way. Uh, this card is just really good. It denies, you know, some some when sent to waiting room cards. Uh, it, it has an Act proc during your turn that's not costed compared to Brainstorm, so you can, you know, go use your Act effects at level one without having to pay stock to enable those cards. And uh, defensively, it makes your counters 1k bigger. So across the board, card is good. Unfortunately, it's 10th anniversary, right? So it doesn't port to English effectively. Uh, next up, two copies of this uh, on, uh, you can pay one to crack it, send it to waiting room basically to check top four, add a flip light. Uh, and it has an on play effect of minus 500. So minus 500, you know, in the mirror and stuff, you can pop there, 500 power rookies. And the uh, card's just good for more mill. Again, hitting second deck before level two. And uh, you just have, you have a very, very wide variety of cards that can do that. Uh, any of them you can get to do that, and this is just one of those other ones. In the mid game, it's also nice. It, it gives you mill without needing to commit a card to the board, right? Because it cracks itself and replaces itself, you can get a four card mill without having to slam down something like uh, this Brainstorm uh, or something. Uh, you can play down your actual field while still having mill. So the card's actually pretty good. Uh, you don't need to play more than two because you have pretty good toolbox cards at level one to get this and maybe use it multiple times. Finally, last level zero is this another 10th anniversary card. Pay one, ditch a card, check top th up to top three, and add a card from among them to your hand. So it helps you get finish your climax. Uh, it's a little bit more mill, but mainly there to be a one-costed way to get your finisher climax if you don't have climax in hand versus this one where you need climax in hand to get the finisher climax. You just there's a lot of different cards in this deck that try to you can get them to in an ideal world, do your finisher, right? You need a lot of different, you need to play tech cards to make sure you can do your finisher in an ideal way because the finisher is so broken that you just need to cover for every possible scenario where it can go wrong. You know, this one, it can go wrong if you draw the wrong climax. It can go wrong if you don't have the climax but only have seven stock. And you also have a two one early play that checks top X uh, so that if you have, you have two extra stock, eight stock, you can do double finisher combo plus play that card to check X. That's, uh, I think, 20 zeros, 3, 6, 8, 12, 12, that's 20 zeros. Uh, and it's very toolboxy. Uh, the reason it's so toolboxy is because at level 1, you have a card that's really good at toolboxing. Uh, so uh, you basically have access to most of these cards. There's nothing wrong with playing a bunch of toolbox cards if your level 1 can so consistently get whatever you need at any time. Uh, for level one combos now, you have four copies of this combo. What it does is it basically 
it has like on play glass climate cannon effect but its ability is to combo with gold bar it gives a character on reverse salvage so there's no reversal denying game plan anymore because as long as your opponent has one lane where you can get a reverse off you're going to be able to proc all of your combos so very different from your you know your traditional level one on reverse combo this card is more consistent at getting uh, multiple copies off of your opponent really can't play around it that easily card's good uh card combos with uh, combo co com combo combos with bar so you know bar level one combos are probably the best level one combos because you can consistently do them uh and uh yeah it's a pretty solid card for it uh, for the deck uh next up two copies of this 10th anniversary card it is on reverse when you use act this turn you can stop charge one from the top of your deck your finisher is a stock heavy finisher it's pay two dish two on attack and the uh, other parts of your game plan are also stock heavy a lot of your core cards that you want to do effects you want to use cost stock so card makes the stock crunch less cumbersome throughout the game and uh, very very important to the deck and it's 10th anniversary unfortunately that's why this deck does not work in english because this card is so important to the deck you can't play it without this card in english it's just not possible uh this is the reason why these these two cards existing is the reason why this card draws dishes a lot of the time because your, your game plan is very you know these two cards are always involved in the game plan and these two cards are anniversary so if you have these two cards on the field this card will draw dish uh yeah the card's so important you, you you will use this card effect like three four times in a game you get three four stock for free off of this effect it's very important only two because uh you usually only want to do this card on third battle because it's a blind stock you can always pay out the stock that you check to use an effect the next turn so uh, you usually only do it on third bat battle and uh, a lot of decks won't give you the opportunity to do more than one reverse uh, so you know having this on third battle having this combo to assign the reverses onto this card means you can just stack all of the effects on your third battle uh, next up two copies of this card so when you have a card in memory this card has on attack pump 3k to something other ability is to on play you dish a card from your hand to top check the top card of your deck and salvage a card from your way room that is level lower than the card that you top checked so this is the broken toolbox card we have i think this card is so so good because 3k pump is you know no joke not a lot of cards pump 3k on attack that's already really good and uh the ditch salvage is just really good at getting your very very toolboxy level zero lineup there are so many cards you can get and this card uh ha gives you access to all of them if you want to do something like double leafa in a turn you can leafa once play this get the leafa again and uh, go to town uh, you know level zero cards you can always grab with this card so you don't have to worry about what you're top checking and this card pumps 3k it makes your this card reverse more consistently right you know this card is not inherently that big you know 5k act effect 6k climax 7k but then when you attack with this card it makes this card 10k which is now getting over like basically everything uh one copy of level one anti-change bomb for pesky standby decks you don't have a crazy problem with standby because your cards are actually pretty big you can tap over a lot of two twos and force counters or you know a lot of standby decks don't play counters so you can just attack over them but uh when they have multiple lanes of two twos uh this card comes in clutch to you know kill off one lane without needing another card to give it power and uh, it's another 10th anniversary card uh, that you will not have access to if you play this in english so uh, again you just need you cannot play this deck in english there's too many 10th anniversary cards that are good uh, one copy of one zero counter because one zero counter i play one copy of it your cards are pretty glass cannon they're not that big on opponent's turn but this card if you have the one zero counter you can hit 8k uh, and it procs the act ability for you to stop charge with this card so i do play one because if the stars align and you can grab this off the salvage off your combo and you're playing against a deck that doesn't hit bigger than 8k you grab this you get a free stock and win the lane so uh, pretty really good on level two i got one copy of 3-5 counter. I am a big fan of 3-5 counters. I think they are very, very good. They're counters that make your characters bigger than your opponent anticipates for. Three five, the extra 1k power is a lot of power, actually. Because, you know, the game is designed in a way where powers kind of have to interline in ways where 1k extra is actually very disruptive for a lot of game plans, especially when you're early with your early plays and your big cards. So uh, I'm a big fan. I've, I used to not think 3-5 counters were very good. I thought they were very generic and vanilla and i wanted to play counters with effects but 
I've come to terms and realized that three three five level, level two counters are actually really really good. Uh, one copy of this 2K support, I don't feel it a lot. It's just available. It's an option. And uh, if you do need to play it at the bare minimum, you, it it refunds the stock, so it's free. You're not wasting a stock on a card, so you don't feel too bad about it. But I rarely play it down. It's usually just for matchups where I want my early plays to have that extra 2K pump. And uh, yeah. Next up for level threes, uh, can I fit this in? Uh, let's just put it here. So first off, one copy of this 2K support. It's a 2K support that also has anti-event and on play pump, uh, on play, uh, not pump, on play uh, bounce a card on the field. So you can get rid of something like a bodyguard in the middle. You can get rid of something like an anti-burn on the field, anti-burn ones, basically make your finisher not work. So you can bounce it and do your finisher. Uh, card is important because those kind of cards exist and uh, you need to out it so you do your finisher. A lot of cards, again, like I said, that that are in the deck purely to enable your finisher to happen because once you can do your finisher, game's over. Uh, one copy of Stock Swap. Uh, it's not that great. Your finisher is quite good at killing through compression, so Stock Swap is kind of whatever. But, you know, sometimes your opponent can get so compressed that you can't even kill through compression. Or sometimes your opponent gets so compressed and you can't do finisher. So you just stock swap them and kill them normally because they got too compressed, they got too greedy. Uh, so there's no reason not to play one copy of this card. Uh, one copy of Musashi. For those situations where you can do double finisher plus Musashi, you just have a little bit more oomph. Uh, the Climax combo, we don't play the Climax for it, so it's just a vanilla Musashi. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, if you have, if the stars align, you have a little bit more oomph. Uh, nothing wrong with that and i just play one because you know eight stock gives you access to double finisher plus musashi three copies of this early play so two or less climax you can early play it uh it's basically always a lot uh, 10 5 with hanon core because i think the condition to get 10 5 with hanon core is having two or more fluck like characters and then it's on play top check x x equals the number of fluck likes on your field helps you dig for your finisher climax if you play at level three helps you mill at level two you know you play you can mill up to five cards uh, helps you. What else helps? You? Does it help you? It helps you, you know, play a really good mid, mid game because uh, this early play has hand on core. They have a harder time justifying killing it, scaling over it to kill it. They have to hard remove it with like a bottom deck bomb or something because this card can just keep coming back and swinging for two soul damage. So, uh, pretty good card actually. I play three because I want to consistently get access to it and frequently I have to level it actually because uh, you see, like, unfortunately, there's not that many yellow that you can actually reasonably put in your level. This is probably one of the only ones, or these, uh, after assuming like you already got one of them in memory, these can go into level. But this is like probably your other card that you're playing into level a lot of the time. So three of that, because one is traditionally, or not traditionally, but one is usually going into level. Finally, four copies of the finisher. I've talked about it a lot in the deck. The deck completely revolves around this card. This card is so broken. A healer on play, whatever. I'd rather have a cantrip, honestly, because the dish cost is heavy, whatever. But whatever, it heals. Uh, on attack, if you have this in memory, pay two ditch two to mill the top 11 cards of your deck, burn one for each climax you hit. And it's individual one pings. It's not like an added amount of ones. Uh, if you're playing the game and you're playing the game plan, you're stock charging, you're doing everything, uh, and you are setting up your deck state for success, this card with double combo will burn one like seven times a lot of the time because you're, you're gonna you're gonna be in a deck state where you like just refresh or something and you can basically have just enough cards in deck to mill through your whole deck and go through all seven climaxes provided you don't trigger one of your climaxes or something you're literally burning one seven times with two copies of the finisher that is it happens a lot it happens a lot. the deck basically revolves around doing this finisher twice in like a new deck state where you can mill through the whole deck and guarantee you can do seven ping one things card is such a good finisher so broken uh unfortunately the rest of the deck i think like i've talked about the game plan a lot unfortunately i think the i think if this finisher was in a shell of some kind of other deck uh it would be even more broken but unfortunately the deck shell is very very fragile i do think it's a little bit fragile it's hard to explain it's kind of like if you don't draw your pieces you kind of just go ape but uh, the finisher is broken, which is uh, the selling point of this bar choice deck. Like you are killing people a lot of the time from 3-0. Like they are just dying. Uh, so uh, yeah, that is the finisher. Climaxes is bar choice. 
Ryan Wiberly's favorite Climax spread, four bar, four choice. And uh, honestly, probably mine as well. Uh, besides Climax spreads that are just really fun, like six pants, two stocks. So, uh, like bar is just the best Climax for level one. Uh, you, you trigger it more often, you get it more often, you loop it more often, and choice is just the sec best secondary Climax because it's flexible. You can choose to get stock when you need it, you can choose to get cards when you need cards. Flexibility is very valuable. Uh, and that's why I think Ryan justifies saying bar choice is the best climax lineup and I'm inclined to agree. Anyways, that's the deck list. Very, very dense. Uh, so, way shorts decks that are super dense. I, I really like playing them because there are so many more choices you can make. I don't like playing them in tournaments necessarily because there are so many more choices you can make. It's very hard to do them all in time. But in a casual setting, this deck is super fun. And I mean, this deck is probably really good because the finisher will just kill people all the time. If you can play this deck really fast, definitely a, a tournament viable deck. But uh, when you have more choices, you just spend longer thinking about them. Like, look how dense this is. There are so many cards pictured on this mat right now. It looks so beautiful, by the way. Anyways, take a screenshot of this, share it with friends. This is my bar choice 10th anniversary deck list. Again, does not port over well to English. Don't try to substitute this deck in English because the deck will suck in English. You probably want to play something different like Pants Choice or something. Anyways, that's it for this video. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you have any questions on you know, card choices or anything, definitely feel free to ask. Like maybe ask me, you know, what would I put in? What, how would I change this deck for English? Uh, maybe I can answer that, but there would be, that'd be a whole separate video, honestly. Uh, make sure to check out our Twitch channel, twitch.tv sbtcg. We playtest all these decks like deck profile on that channel. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video. It was a, how long was this video? 21 minutes, crazy, so long. Anyways, yeah, it's UA signing off. Take care, everyone. Peace.